Sigoni, Sigoni, how's your macaroni? Hey guys, and welcome back. Today I am super excited to share with you this chunky granny square blanket. I cannot wait to get into the tutorial. But first, if you're new here, hello, my name's Sigoni, and this channel is all about teaching beginners how to crochet like pros. If you're not new here, then welcome back. All right, let's talk about this blanket. So I have always been someone who loves granny squares, love them, and I've always wanted to make a granny square blanket. However, we all know how much work goes into making granny squares, and it's never something that I was able to complete. So I would start making squares, and then I would feel overwhelmed with all the ends I had to weave in, having to join them in the end, and it just was not happening for me. I also, I am not the best at picking colors, and I think I've mentioned that a couple times before. So thinking about creating a blanket that requires a bunch of different colors. I just, it's like I get at this fork in the road. I am just so indecisive. I can never choose the right colors to go together. So it makes it easier if it's done for me. Oh, and also granny square blankets take forever to finish. And I give so much props to everyone who has completed a granny square blanket with a medium or lightweight yarn. But for me, being a mom and running a business and all of these other things, we all have so many obligations, right? So I really wanted to make a granny square blanket, but I didn't want it to take forever. I just wanted it to be a simple process. So I came across Bernat Blanket Ogo, and since they already have colors put together, I really loved that idea, obviously. <laughs> and so I found a couple colors that I really like together and it just inspired me to create a granny square blanket out of them. So for this blanket, I used two skeins of regular Bernat blanket in vintage white. And then I used two skeins of Bernat blanket Ogo in what is this called? Copper coins. And then I used three in the color Shiraz. And I don't have Shiraz with me because I used it all, but I'll put a picture right here so you know what it looks like. So that's the yarn that I use to create a, actually, I don't even know the dimensions. Hold please. So that's the yarn that I use to create a 44 by 60 inch blanket. So it's quite a large blanket, but you can always make it bigger or you can make it smaller. And I've also put together a premium PDF for this pattern that includes the color chart that just gives you a visual of where each square should go. And I've also included the same charts for a 40 by 40 inch blanket and a larger blanket than this one. And I'll put the little picture here because I can't remember what size I said it was. So if you'd like to purchase the premium PDF, you can find that link in the description. Now, if you've never made a granny square before, I released a tutorial last week on how to create these squares using a lighter weight yarn. So if you've never created a square before, you might wanna try and practice that first just to get the hang of it before you use a blanket yarn. You will also need an eight millimeter hook for this pattern. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create each square. Then we'll talk about the different color combinations and how many you need to make of each. And then I will show you how to put all of these squares together using the slip stitch join. And honestly, it is really fun to join all of these squares together and you really don't have to make that many and it really doesn't take that long. So that is one of the reasons why I love this pattern so much. It was so much fun to work up the entire time. I just loved it. So I hope you love working on it as much as I did. And then finally, at the end of the tutorial, we will cover how to create this border here. And it's super easy. All right, let's get into the tutorial. To use this Bernat Blanket Ogo, I took this whole cake apart and then roll each color into a ball before you actually start. That way you can just grab and go. You also have the option to wind them up into a ball using a ball winder, which is a lot faster if you already have one. All right, now into the tutorial for real this time. First, we're going to create a slip knot and chain four. Now 
Now you're going to slip stitch into that very first chain, so the fourth chain from your hook. Yarn over, pull that loop through, and through the loop on your hook. That way you've created a nice circle. And if you don't want to do it this way, you could also create a magic circle. So after you create your circle, chain five, and then place three double crochet into that center circle. So yarn over, insert your hook into that middle circle, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now place two more double crochet into the center of the circle. Now chain two and place three double crochet into the center of the circle. Now chain two again and place three more double crochet into the center circle. And if you need to, you can move your stitches around just by pushing them over. So three double crochet into that center circle. Now chain two. And now we're going to place two double crochet into that center circle. If this yarn is making it too difficult for you to see, you might want to practice using a different type of yarn. I created another tutorial for this using medium weight yarn. So if you're having trouble with this, try to follow that tutorial first and then come back here to make your blanket. I'll leave a link for that tutorial in the description. So now what we're going to do is slip stitch into our third chain from our beginning chain five. So here you can see this is our fifth chain, our fourth chain, and then our third chain. So insert your hook into that third chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, and through the loop on your hook. And now we're going to switch colors. So next I have my light pink. We're going to switch yarn by slip stitching into that chain two space, drop the yarn that you're holding and pick up the new color, wrap it around your hook and pull the strand through the loop on your hook. Now we're going to chain five again, but if you're having trouble finding that third chain, go ahead and chain three. Then use a stitch marker to mark that third chain and then chain two more. So that's five total chains. Now go ahead and place three double crochet into this very first chain two space. I like to crochet over my end so that it secures them more. And so after I place my three double crochet into that first chain two space, I like to pull them a little bit so it's nice and tight. Now chain one, place three double crochet into this next chain two space. chain two, and now we're going to place another three double crochet into this same space. So you should have three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, all in that corner chain two space. Now chain one, 
and we're going to repeat the same thing from this corner. So three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, all in this corner space. And remember, don't be afraid to move your stitches around if you need some space. They're not going to go anywhere. Alright, so now that we're done with this corner, we're going to chain one again and repeat the same thing in the last corner. Three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. All right, so now we're done with all three of these corners. For our last corner, or our first corner, we're going to chain one and place two double crochet into this corner space here. So right in this space. Oops. Now we're going to slip stitch into that third chain, and that third chain is the place that we marked with the stitch marker. So remove your stitch marker, and slip stitch into that chain. So insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, and through the loop on your hook. And that is round two. Now for round three, we're changing color again. Insert your hook into that chain two space, grab your new color, and pull it through the loop on your hook. Chain five, and again, you can mark that third chain. Place three double crochet into this very first space. And again, you can pull these strands to tighten it up. Then chain one and place three double crochet into this chain one space here. Chain one again, and now we're at our corner space. So we're going to place three double crochet, chain two, and then three more double crochet, all into that chain two corner space. And we're just going to repeat that same pattern around. So next we'll chain one, place three double crochet into that chain one space, chain one again, place three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet into the corner, and repeat around. Now for the last side we're going to chain one, and place three double crochet into that chain one space. And then chain one and place two double crochet into our last space, which is where we started the chain five. Now go ahead and take out your stitch marker 
and slip stitch into that third chain. And that is it for round three. And this is the part where I like to cut off my loose strands. And now for our fourth and final color. To switch to this color, again, insert your hook into that first chain two space. Grab your new color and pull it right through. Now chain five. And we're basically going to repeat round three. Place three double crochet into this very first space. Pull on your strands to make it extra tight. Then chain one and place three double crochet into each of these chain one spaces. And always remember to chain one after your double crochet cluster. Chain one and three double crochet. And now we're going to do the same thing for our corner spaces. Chain one, three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. Chain one, and repeat that pattern around. So chain one, three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. And repeat all the way until you reach the other side. Now that we've reached our last space before our beginner, beginning corner space, we will chain one and place two double crochet into that first corner space. Now remove your stitch marker and slip stitch into that chain three. And then again, slip stitch into that corner space. So insert your hook into the corner space, yarn over and pull through that space and the loop on your hook. And now we're going to give ourselves a few inches and cut our yarn, yarn over and pull all the way through and pull tight to secure. And now you can also go ahead and cut your other tail. And that's it for your first granny square. But before we talk about how many you'll need to make, make sure that you really try your best to weave in all of these ends. The reason why I'm saying that is because once you're done doing all of these squares, it's going to be a whole lot more overwhelming if you weave in ends all at the same time. So do your best to weave in your ends as you go, or at least after every five squares or so. Okay, so now let's talk about the color combinations and how many of these squares you'll need to make for each. For this tutorial, we are making a blanket that is 40 inches wide and 56 inches long. So if you are making this blanket with me, you will need six squares in this color, 12 squares in this color, eight squares in this color, and nine squares in this color. Now to join these squares, we're going to use a slip stitch join. And I find this to be the easiest way to join squares. So what you're gonna wanna do first is make sure you have the picture pulled up so you can see which order your squares are gonna be in. If you're not following my pattern exactly, 
make sure that you at least make a sketch or maybe use Stitch Fiddle to plan out your colors. Or if you don't care about the colors and what order they go into, then it really doesn't matter. So we're gonna start from the right side of the blanket and work to the left side. So here I have the first two rows. This is row one of the blanket all the way at the bottom, and this is row two of the blanket. So what we're going to do is first create a slip knot with your white yarn. Insert your hook into the slip knot. And whenever you create a slip stitch join, it does create a raised border. I really like the way that that looks, so that's what I'm going with today. But if you don't want the raised border, then you can flip both of these over and do it on the wrong side. That way when you flip it over to the right side, it won't have that raised seam. And you'll see what I mean once we get going here. So the first thing that we're going to do is find your corner chain two space. We have two chains in this corner, so the one on this side and the one on this side. I know it's hard to see right now because this yarn is so fluffy, but the chain has two strands, so we're going to go through the back loop of that chain. Now you're going to pick up your second square and find the same thing. This corner has two chains. This is the first chain and this is the second. We're going to go into the front loop of that chain. So that's right here. And now we're going to slip stitch those together. So yarn over, pull that strand through both of those loops and through the loop on your hook. Now moving on to the next stitch, we have our three double crochet here. You're gonna go through the back loop of that first double crochet, and then looking on the other square, we have our three double crochet here, and we're gonna catch this front loop here. Yarn over, pull through both of those loops, and through the loop on your hook. And you're just going to continue that all the way down the row. So here's the next double crochet. We'll insert our hook into that back loop and then look on the other side. You'll catch that first loop on the other side. And while you're doing this, just make sure that your squares are lined up. Again, back loop and then front loop. Yarn over and pull through. Once you reach the chain one that separates each cluster, you're going to do the same thing. Just insert your hook into the back loop of that chain and then the front loop of the chain on the other side. So just continue that until you reach the next corner space. And once you get the hang of it, this way of joining squares is really fun and it goes by pretty quickly. Okay, so we just completed our last double crochet of this side. And this is what it starts to look like. So this is the raised border that I was talking about earlier. Once you see them all come together, this raised seam kind of looks like a picture frame and I just think it's really pretty. So that's why I decided to leave it. So now that we're done with our first two squares, we're going to move on to the next two. So if you look at the photo, we have this one that comes next, and this one comes next up top. Now you're going to take your next square, and again, in that corner space, there's two chains, and we're going to join it into the right chain 
into the back loop of that chain. And then you're going to do the same thing on this corner. We have two chains, one right here, one on the right side, one on the left side. And we're going to join into that front loop of the second chain. And yarn over and pull those strands all the way through. Just like that. Now again, insert your hook into the back loop of the next double crochet and into the front loop of the double crochet on the other granny square. Back loop of the next double crochet and front loop of the next on the other side. And just repeat that all the way down the row. And remember we're doing the same thing with the chain one space. Again, we've reached the corner, so insert your hook into the back loop of that first chain and into the front loop of the chain on the other side and slip stitch. And now we're ready for our next two squares. So this is what it looks like so far. So these two squares here are not connected, of course, and all of this here is connected. So now let's move on to the next set. Now again, insert your hook into the chain on the first side and then into the chain, into the front loop of the chain on the other side. So while we're doing this, let me know in the comments if you've ever joined granny squares this way. So just continue the same process for each square in this row. And again, if you're making the same size as me, you should have five squares going across. Whenever you're working the slip stitch join, you wanna make sure that you're not pulling your slip stitches too tight. So just try to be not super loose, but just loose enough to where it's not scrunching up your stitches. And if you find that your stitches are getting too tight, you can try going up a hook size, but you'll definitely have to experiment with that and see what works best for you. Now, since we're doing the shorter side of the blanket first, you should have five of these panels going across. And now we're already done with our first row. So here's our first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. So we have all of these done and seamed together. And now we're going to cut our yarn at the end. So leave a long tail, yarn over, and pull all the way through, and pull tight to secure. And now what we're going to do is just move on to the next row. So we're gonna go all the way back to the right side, and start at the top. So for this row, we did two rows at the same time. And now that we've already gotten our first two rows done, we're just gonna go one row at a time. So our next square is going to be the same color because remember we're going pink, yellow, pink, yellow, pink, yellow. So I'll go ahead and grab a pink square, grab my white yarn and start by doing the same exact thing. So remember first we create a slip knot, put it around our hook, insert your hook into that first chain space, and the matching chain stitch on the other side. Then yarn over and pull through. And we're just repeating the same thing that we've been doing to connect all the squares. 
So we're just going to continue adding row by row until you reach the top of the blanket. Once you have all of these rows connected, we're going to go back and finish off the rest of the squares that haven't been touched. So we'll create another slip stitch border going the other way. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up this seaming process and I'll meet you back when I'm ready to do the vertical slip stitch rows. Don't worry, I won't leave you hanging. Once you have all of your granny squares joined horizontally, you'll want to flip your blanket around and just do the same thing vertically. That way you have all of your pieces joined. So I'll go ahead and show you one row of this vertical joining so I can show you how to join at the center of these squares. It's very difficult to film this because this blanket is so large on this little table but you're gonna do the same thing that you did to join the other squares. You're gonna start with the slip knot, put it on your hook, and then start right here in the chain two corner. And just like normal, we're going to slip stitch across. So remember to insert your hook into the back loop of that first double crochet closest to you, and then into the front loop of the double crochet on the other granny square. Then yarn over, pull through both loops, and through the loop on your hook. So continue doing that until you reach the corner and I'll show you what to do there. Now once you reach the corner, I like to make sure that all of my unwoven ends are on the other side. That way they don't get in the way. So we have one more stitch before the corner. All right, so now we've reached our corner space where we joined all four of these squares. So first you're going to insert your hook into that first loop from the chain from the first chain two and then do the same thing on the other side and slip stitch. And now we're going to do the same thing on this side. So we're going to hop right over to the next square and insert your hook into the back loop of that chain that's in the corner. So not the double crochet, but the chain right next to it. And then again with the chain stitch on the other side. One. And then just continue the same way. So this is what your corner join will look like. Looks pretty flawless, right? So I'm gonna continue down this row and then I'll show you what all of our joined squares look like in the end. And then we'll start to work on our border. So when you're all finished joining your squares, this is what your blanket should look like. I really love this method for joining squares for this blanket because it leaves like a frame on each granny square. Now I told you I was super excited whenever I was making this blanket. So I kind of forgot to film the border of this blanket. So I'm going to show you really quick what I really did to make it. It's so easy. It's not, you don't even really need a tutorial. So let's talk about that really quick. Okay. So once all of your squares are together, this is what it will look like. And whenever you go to create the border, you will obviously use the vintage white Bernat blanket. And you can join in between any of these chain three clusters anywhere along the blanket. I chose to start right here. It's really just a random square on the blanket. So you'll chain three and place two double crochet into this space. Then chain one, three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet chain one, three double crochet, and then so whenever you're connecting these two corners, you'll place your three double crochet in each corner. And then just continue placing three double crochet in between each chain one space. And then once you reach the end of the row, you will slip stitch to the beginning chain three, and then just continue slip stitching until you reach the chain two space, the chain one space here, and then chain three and place two double crochet, chain one, three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet, and so on. So that is how I made the border. I'm sorry that I didn't really show how to do it, but you've been doing the three double crochet, chain one enough at this point that I felt that it was pretty self-explanatory. So if you still have questions, leave comments in the description and I will get back to you ASAP. So let me know in the comments if you're gonna use these colors 
or if you're going to create a color scheme of your own. And if you make this blanket, be sure to tag me at Sigoni Macaroni across all social media. I would seriously love to see your blankets. And don't forget that we have a free Facebook group that I will also link in the description box below. Let me stand up and show you how big and beautiful this blanket is. Okay, so here is the finished chunky granny square blanket. It is so big and it's actually pretty heavy, but it makes the perfect weighted blanket. So here it is. It's so pretty. Okay. Okay, it's super heavy. 